All right, so this is one of those two that I wanna make sure that I have the right medication, right? So I'm giving regular insulin, okay? The other thing to note, is this a, a single dose or is this a multi-vial dosage? This is a multi-vial, right? So I wanna make sure that when I remove the cap that I scrub the hub really, really, really good, okay? Because this is one that we're gonna be, multiple people are gonna be using it, okay? This is not a single dose. Um, so I've wiped the hub and I've got my syringe ready. And once again, we've talked about this. I'm getting two units of insulin, okay? And as you can see, this goes all the way to 100 units, right? So two units is really, really baby, okay? And remember, these needles are tiny, so just draw back as far as you need to to make sure you have the correct dose, okay? And then we're gonna go all the way up, okay? Right to two, okay? When I have my two units, I can recap this. And when, what did I say that I was going to do again? I'm gonna verify with what? Another nurse, right? I wanna make sure that I've got the correct dosage. So I would bring a nurse in, verify, Miss Molly's gonna be getting two units of insulin. I just want you to verify this with me. Let them eyeball it, okay? And let them make sure that you're giving the appropriate dose, okay? Now, when we give insulin, it's gonna be given the exact same way that I gave the Lovenox injection. Find out how your patient prefers to get it. And once again, we're gonna follow the same protocol, rotating sites um, and all of that, okay? So that's how we give insulin, okay? When we're giving it subcutaneously. There are other methods that we'll learn about later about how we can administer an IV as well. Um, our last one is going to be an IM injection, okay? So into the muscle. Um, and there's a lot of important things to understand when it comes to giving an IM injection. For one, these needles are going to be a little bit bigger, right? We have a whole variety of, of, of gauge sizes, needle sizes that we can give for IM injections. So one thing you can be sweet and think about is what is maybe the, what is the smallest um, needle that I can give for this patient and still deliver properly administer the medication, okay? We wanna be nice to our patients. We don't wanna take out that 21 gauge if we don't need it, okay? If we can give it with a 25 gauge, then that's the one that we're going to, to give it with, okay? So there's multiple sites that we can give um, an IM injection. I know I don't have my model here anymore, but um, we're all familiar with the what? The deltoid, okay? The deltoid muscle. Um, one thing to know about when we're giving anything through the deltoid is that we don't want to give anything greater than one mil through the deltoid. Why do you think that is? Well, it's a lot of medication to be given a smaller muscle, right? So we want to think about that, okay? So just know that if the, if the dosage is greater than one mil, then we're going to want to give that in a bigger muscle, okay? So the deltoid is one that we get, that, as you know, that's where we get most of our vaccines um, and some of those smaller dose medications we'll give that in the deltoid, okay? Big thing about location, and we all laugh about that because I think we've all been the, the victim of getting stuck way up here, okay? Is being mindful of where that deltoid muscle is, okay? And that's gonna be more pronounced on certain people than it is others, but making sure you have that right location, okay? And that's gonna come with practice and looking at a lot of arms and figuring out where that location is, but be mindful of where that is, okay? The other um, two locations that you're normally gonna give um, medications if we're giving them to an adult. Now with kids, we do utilize the vastus lateralis, which is that, mu that muscle down here. But with adults, we normally are gonna move um, to, the, uh, to the dorsalis gluteal, which is gonna be kind of in here. And then we have um, the gluteal muscle that's gonna be more in our thigh, okay? So those are the two muscles um, that, we're gonna, that we're gonna give medication. So a um, volume of medication is gonna be part of it. And then you'll fancy word viscosity, but of the medication is also gonna determine where I give it. If I'm giving a, a very viscous medication like progesterone, I don't wanna give that to someone in their deltoid. I wanna give that to them in, in one of these bigger muscles, okay? So once I've, I've found my location um, and I've grabbed all of my things, I've determined what needle size I need for my patient um, and all of that, we've gone through our six rights. We need to make sure we have the right patient, we've got the right drug, okay? Um, especially before we're gonna give them a shot. Do you think something is gonna move quicker through um, a muscle than it is subcutaneously? Yes, it is. They're going to absorb that quicker, right? So we want to make sure that we have the right drug. So I've got, um, I've got all my supplies. I'm going to make sure that I have my needle, all right? And today I'm just going to be giving one mil of a medication, okay? So I've decided that I'm going to administer that through the deltoid on my patient, okay? Here's a big thing that you may still hear from some of us old school nurses because when we learned, we were taught to aspirate before we administered a, a must, an IM injection. That is no longer the case. They used to say that there would be fear that we could disturb the, uh, a nerve or anything like that, but that is no longer the case. We don't aspirate anymore, okay? So when you've determined your site, 
IM is always going to be given at 90 degrees, okay? So we want to make sure that that's just a, it's going to be at 90 degrees, straight down, okay? Or in the case with your patient, if they're sitting across from you, it's going to be, okay? To me, I always tell people it's kind of like throwing a dart or shooting a dart, okay? You want to be as straight as possible, okay? You don't want to be coming in at an angle or, okay, we want to be nice and straight, okay, when we're giving ours, okay? So it's going to be the same as it is with a subcutaneous injection. We're going to follow all the same policies, right? We're coming in, we're telling the patient, um, see if they've had a shot before. I would be very surprised if they haven't, okay? But just make sure some people have, as you know, some people pass out when they have injections. So make sure if you had a shot before, how have you done okay with it? Okay, well, I'm going to be giving you a shot. It's just going to be up here in your shoulder. Um, I usually tell my patients to, you know, the big thing with giving muscles is, is we want them to relax as much as possible. That's a hard thing to do when someone's coming at you with a needle, but I usually tell, especially when I'm giving you that delta, you don't want them sitting up here flexed, okay? So you want them to relax that muscle as much as possible. That's why I usually tell them to look over if there's a friend in the room, you know, to kind of talk to them while we're getting them prepped so they're not so anxious because we naturally do that when we're anxious. But we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have our gloves on. We're gonna take our alcohol and we're gonna clean the site really, really well, okay? I've got my drug, I've checked, I've got the right dosage, I've got my right needle size, okay? Well, here's a big thing with these. It's gonna be the same thing, but when you give a shot, and I always laugh with people, but if it's not a thick medication, don't take 10 years to give the shot, okay? That's very painful for the patient, to, okay? And a lot of times that can actually cause the, the injection site to hurt for a long time afterwards, okay? So when you've got your medication ready, you're going to get our site. We've got them relaxed. We're going to kind of get that that area set with our other two fingers so we kind of know where we're going to go. And then we're going to dart. And we're going to press that medicine in and out, okay? Now, if my needle size is bigger, especially if I'm having to give a, a, something like testosterone that's really, really thick, um, and I'm using a 21-gauge needle, what do you anticipate might happen after I've given that shot? They might bleed a little bit, okay? Or I've got this patient that's on a blood thinner. So what should I have in the room? Always have a couple, some gauze with you or something, okay, just in case, because I've made that mistake many times and that's the one time that they're bleeding all over, okay? And that does not make a patient feel good after they've just gotten a shot. So make sure you got that. Put it on the site, you can have a ba your Band-Aid ready, okay? I always like to hold a little pressure even before putting a Band-Aid on and then get your Band-Aid on. Um, assess, make sure that they're, that they're feeling okay, that you've gotten all that. Same thing, where's this gonna go? In the sharps container, okay? So if your sharps container is, we can go ahead and get that in um, and dispose of that and then clean all of our things, assess your patient, make sure that they're doing okay before you leave the room, okay?